This video is going to be a bit unusual since it's not in my line of content, but given recent news and the significance it had on me, I'd feel wrong not saying anything about it. On the evening of August 29th, I got word that Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, a mobile gotcha spin-off of the Final Fantasy series, was officially having its global version right off into the sunset. While I hadn't touched the game since before COVID existed, it was my first significant gotcha game, and I put quite a good chunk of time into it. Especially considering, issues and your take on gotcha games aside, it was a surprisingly well-made mobile game. A game doesn't last over 8 years being complete trash. My tenure in the game was nowhere near that long though. My time in the game lasted from late July 2016 to September 2018. This time coincided with the end of the 6 star era, and I effectively left with said era. Although the circumstances for doing so were less than pleasant. If you don't mind me, I wanted to make this video to at least recall my memories from that time. I won't be too long. Promise. I don't have a lot of memories regarding 2016. I do know that I started around late July of that period, and for the most part it was simply just picking up new units and doing my best in all the events and story that was available. The sole defining moment of the year came at the very end of it, featuring the game's very first raid in Frosty. At the time, Final Fantasy XV was a recent release, and to promote it, Noctis made an appearance in both global and Japanese markets simultaneously. It was neat and all, but I didn't have high hopes. Come Christmas Day, everybody got a bunch of summon tickets to celebrate it, and I would use those tickets in hopes of getting something decent at least. Eventually, I cracked one of the gold crystals I picked up, and it reformed into a rainbow. And there he was. I was ecstatic beyond belief. That was actually my first 5-star base unit after many failed attempts trying to get one. With his newfound capabilities, I would finish the raid in stride and moved into 2017 with some pretty high hopes. Little did I realize that would be my last rainbow for over 6 months. The first half of 2017 could be described as simply good but not good enough. Good enough to clear most content, but not good enough to fully complete it. Only with the vision of Bahamut Raid did I start getting serious boosts in power, in due part to being able to get my first Trustmaster rewards and the Gungner and Dragger spikes, if only because the Moogles were available as raid pulls. As for event trials, I had no chance at that point. I had trouble dealing with Ant and Nola, let alone the current trials that were active. A particularly egregious one was the Kefka trial with the Floating Continent event. At the time, I saw a thread where somebody was offering a carry unit for the trial. So I asked for a little help, got on his friend list, and attempted the trial a couple times, but unfortunately, I just could not get over the hump. The event ends, and he nukes his entire friend list, myself included, and then makes another carry unit for the next event. I thought about asking for help, but the attitude and tone he had for the entire thread not only made me decide against it, but assuming that anyone who offered a carry unit had a similar mindset, I made a vow never to ask for a carry unit again, a promise I would keep for the rest of my playing time. All the meanwhile, I was still trying to pull for 5 star bases, especially Randy due to being a limited unit in Orlando due to all the hype he had. I failed on every single one, and while my friends were having at least 3 to 4 or 5 star bases if not a full party, I had Noctis. And that was it. Come July, I would finally catch a break with the first anniversary rewards offering a guaranteed rainbow pull. So I saved up the lapis and managed to make it happen. My second 5 star base ended up becoming Trans Terror. Perfect. I would soon clear my first event trial with the Hene Mines event, as well as get my third 5 star base in Dark Fina before July was over. However, both those girls came at a time when magic damage could only really get you so far. As far as I was concerned, Noctis was still running the show. This led to a breaking point in the near event, where I tried everything in order to get A2 or 2B, and I would get my fourth rainbow, except it was a lightning. Lightning's gimmick by that point fucking sucked. Even worse, the following month and change after the near event was nothing but blue crystals. A grand total of just four golds all the way to the end of September. Lovely. By that point, I was nearly wasted with the game and was planning to leave by Halloween if things kept going the way they were. Eventually, I would finally get a breakthrough. Even though I was heavily struggling, I was working on some specific TMRs, and upon getting all of them culminated in me taking on the Gilgamesh trial. I was able to clear it under my own power, which felt amazing, and to celebrate, I would pull the daily half-off summon, which became my fifth rainbow. 
And finally, I got another physical attacker in Onion Knight. Throw in Ayaka as my 6th rainbow just a little over a week after getting Onion Knight, and all momentum was in my favor. I was getting much better, much quicker. After a couple more rainbows, I would eventually get my first limited 5-star unit in Grimlord Sakura, who would also become a mainstay with my parties alongside Noctis. By the end of that Halloween event, I was able to take the Dark Espers out under my own power, and miraculously prevailed over the Skeleton King, which, according to all the sources I was able to scrounge up making this video, was the single hardest event raid of the 6-star era. Over the final two months of the year, I would take out the Echidna and Octopus Teacher trials as well. I also cleared the Iceberg trial about as soon as it released. It was a total shit show, like it pretty much was all the time, but once everything was set exactly right, it was over in the blink of an eye. This chaotic year ended on a very high note, as the final poll I would make for 2017 resulted in my second limited 5-star unit in White Knight Null. I went into July that year with just a single Noctis. By the end of it, I was up to nearly 20 unique 5-star units. I was also far better than I could have imagined I would be. By this point, I'd say I was around 80% complete with the game, events excluded. I felt pretty close to reaching the high point, so I entered 2018 with one goal. Finish what I started. By this point, events were simply routine stuff. Clear out everything there was to do, and take out the trial if there was one. What I was truly concerned with were the trials I still had yet to do, starting with the Gaian. For quite a while, I was hesitant doing this trial, mainly because of the reports of it taking over an hour to complete for most cases. Something that I simply just did not have time for. But after seeing a specific video on it regarding Trance Terras, a light bulb went off in my head and it gave me an opportunity. I had to go kamikaze on it. It took quite a few attempts over the course of about a week, but eventually everything went right and I was able to decommission a guy. A couple days later, I would take out the first Chamber of Arms trial in Sheratan, followed by the Wicked Moon a day after that. The second Chamber of Arms trial, Elnath, took an unusually long time to try to complete, mainly because I had very high difficulty figuring out what to properly do, as I was struggling with it a whole bunch. In the meantime, I picked up more rainbows and just kept getting better gear. It wouldn't be until the middle of March before everything lined up correctly and everything was in my favor. After that was done, Elnath finally went down. By that point, only one trial remained. The hardest trial in the entire game up to that point. The global exclusive Rumble of Malbor. I took a few attempts mostly to figure out what I needed to do and what companion unit would be best against it. Eventually, I would find a Dark Vritus that I didn't realize was neutral on element until after I cleared the trial. I was surprisingly doing well after four turns, so I picked up a turn chart, countered correctly on the turns that were specified, and before long, the trial was brought to its knees. I had done it. After clearing that trial with all three missions, I had officially completed everything that there was to do in the game. All the main quests were completed, all the trials were completed, and the event was completed at that point. All I could do was simply wait for new content. As said new content came and I breezed through it easily, I also reached some very high statistical spikes that I never would have expected to reach. Over 1200 attack dual wielding with Onion Knight and Noctis, over 1600 attack double handed with Cloud and Dark Knight Cecil, over 1400 magic with Grimlord Sakura, which not a lot of people believe before I showed a screenshot, and over a thousand defense and spirit for respective characters. If only for a while, I felt like I was on the mountaintop. I was able to clear anything that came my way and helped everybody that needed help. Unfortunately, being on the mountaintop means there's only one way to go. As we all waited for the 7-star era to officially commence, the second anniversary took place. Everyone was given a boatload of tickets to use, and I ultimately used my entire stash in one day. I ended up with four rainbows, one of which was my most desired one in Marie. I was so happy finally getting her after so long. Unfortunately, that shining moment ended up becoming my last hurrah in the game. Longtime viewers on my channel likely recognize that I have had a very toxic family. And wouldn't you know it, tensions with them began to flare up severely over the course of July 2018. It ended up reaching a point where, in order to force me to deal with their bullshit, they would quite literally cut the electricity to my room for hours on end. This meant not only was my laptop completely useless, since there wasn't much I could do on it, but my phone had very limited use since I couldn't charge it or really do anything with it either. They basically bombed the motivation I had for the game akin to the US bombing the Yamato. 
And just like that battleship, they eventually got the best of me as I just couldn't bail out of it. When the maintenance came to begin the Seven Star Era, I was a completely different person. I had no drive, I had no interest, I had no motivation. I spent much of August simply just doing daily missions, doing a summon or two, and just logging in, logging off, and that was the end of it. The Deus Ex event would be the final event I ever took part in, and on my last full day in the game, I would pull my 50th and final rainbow in Prish. On the evening of September 1st, I announced to the community I was in my retirement from the game. And that was it. I tried to make a revival attempt at the end of that year, but it quickly flamed out after shit hit the fan, and I never made an attempt again. With the end of that revival run, my time in Final Fantasy Brave Exvius officially came to a close. It's been over half a decade since I last played this game, so why am I bringing all this up now? It's probably the same reason for a lot of people, really. Memorizing a game that was pretty significant to them in some way. This was a game that I really enjoyed playing, and the community I was in was one I really enjoyed being in. For the record, I was never part of the Red community. Long story short, I don't like how that site works, and I simply don't bother with it. Instead, I went to the GameFAQs community, as I already had an account there keeping track of my game collection long before I started playing the game. It would be a while before I realized there was an active board on that game, and eventually I jumped in. Everything I said in this video and all the screenshots I posted all come from my archived topics from that board, although some of it was lost, unfortunately. It was a place I really enjoyed being, even if I was heavily struggling in my early period. However, it was an even better feeling having gone from those dregs to becoming one of the top players of the game being able to clear everything that was around. It felt awesome, if only for a while. Unfortunately, I will not be joining the players as they ride this game off into the sunset. I lost the credentials to my original account long ago, and I'm in way too much shit to even think about it. But at the very least, I wanted to make a video about this game as an in-memoriam thing. It was a significant game to me, even though I didn't do much with it. Quite frankly, this just isn't in my line of content. As the global version of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius goes away, all I can say are these four simple words. Thanks for the memories. Hey everyone, Eclipse14 here. I know this is a little out of left field, but after hearing news that it was going to shut down, I had to make something. Hopefully you enjoyed me talking about the game, even though it's been quite a while since I last played it. It's just something I really liked, and I needed to say something about it. If you just discovered this channel, feel free to check out the rest of my content, and if it's within your interest, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It would mean quite a lot to me as I continue my work. In the meantime, I want to thank you for sticking around and listening, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.